I thought there was a, you had to be 50 feet away from the building, not leaning up against it. What's your name? You yes, name. you do. Yes, sir, you do. What? Good luck with that, buddy. You're in the public eye. Either he got my tag or he got my name off the FOIA request, either one. But somehow he found out where I live because he came by my house honking his horn going up and down my road. Welcome back to the Lackluster Channel. Today's story features Big G Audits, who recently went to the Justice Center building in Blountville, Tennessee, to submit a FOIA request and speak with the public information officer about their Facebook page. Okay, guys, got her filled out. Just waiting on them to sign and date it and give me a copy of it. After submitting his request, he was notified that the PIO was out to lunch. Big G began filming in the parking lot and noticed that several state-owned vehicles were left unattended with subpoenas left on the passenger seats. While the documents are generally public information, it is possible that sensitive information was left in plain view for anyone to see as they walked by. Shortly after, he informed an officer in the area about the exposed documents. You might want to tell somebody there's a subpoena laying in the open in that car there. Okay. Wow, there's two. Two out of four. He then notices correctional officer Brian Knipe leaning against the Justice Center building, smoking. Ironically, just 10 feet away from a sign that reads, no smoking or vaping within 50 feet of the building. And while the 50 feet policy may not be enforceable, the policy would certainly apply to the building's employees. Big G inquires about the posted sign. It don't look like 40 feet to me. Look like a motherfucker leaning up against the building to me. Yeah, right next to the building. I thought there was a, you had to be 50 feet away from the building, not leaning up against it. That's a notification. As a notification, I thought that was a state federal law in front of every federal and state building. I don't know that that's true. Oh, it is? Well, we'll find out. What's your name, sir? What's your name and rank? number 815-912. 815-912. What's your name? What's your name? You yes, name. you do. Yes, sir, you do. You All right, well, we'll find out. Right, okay. you, buddy. Get you. 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 And the whole road in on. I am, bitch. I will. I'll post every bit of it. Mother. Give me any lip. You. While the manner in which Big G redressed his grievance with the state employee breaking the law may ruffle some feathers, the manner in which he expressed his contempt for the hypocrisy he's just witnessed is certainly protected free speech. After the short exchange, Big G was going to dismiss the incident and walked towards his vehicle to leave. But as he walked away, Correctional Officer Knipe tells Big G that if he films his vehicle, he's gonna sue him. What? If you've watched any of our other videos, you'd know that filming a vehicle in a public parking lot is not illegal and would be laughed out of court. Imagine actually thinking you could sue someone for that. With all the CCTV cameras, smartphones, and dash cams, everyone would be suing everyone. Now, imagine employing someone as a law enforcement officer that thinks that's the way things work in America. Big G walks over to the vehicle that CO Knipe now occupies and documents the various stickers and plate numbers. This becomes very important in just a moment. Good luck with that, buddy. You're in the public eye. I, I can still film you, dumb. Anything you can see from public, you can film. You're a stupid. A few hours later, Big G is at his home when a black SUV slowly drives up his street as though it is looking for a specific address. Once the vehicle comes within view of Big G's address, the operator blares on his horn as he passes. Big G begins recording from his cell phone on his porch and the vehicle returns.
This is Correctional Officer Knipe's private vehicle. This is the same vehicle driving by Big G's home and blaring his horn multiple times. Under Tennessee Code 39-17-315, stalking is defined as intentionally and repeatedly following or harassing in a manner that causes fear. For a first-time offense, a stalker will be charged with a Class A misdemeanor, which is punishable by up to 11 months and 29 days in jail, and a fine of up to $2,500. One year or more is considered a felony. Officer Knipe likely used state resources to violate Big G's Fourth Amendment rights by running his information to find out where he lives or by obtaining it through a FOIA request he submitted earlier that day. But this incident is far from over. A few days later, Big G returned to the Justice Center, where he met with Lieutenant Burke Murray to file an official complaint. Either he got my tag or he got my name off the FOIA request, either one. But somehow, he found out where I lived because he came by my house honking his horn going up and down my road. How you know it was him? Did you recognize yeah. the car? Or it's, he's got stickers him? all over it. I saw him. Sure I even He goes up the hill honking. So you can see him going up my hill. Right. And by the time he gets to my house, you can tell he's going slow looking for house numbers. As soon as he gets in front of my house and can see my house number, he starts laying on the horn. Was your, your van parked there? Yes, it was. Right in plain view. So it's the same van you up here? Yes, sir. And so he goes up the hill and goes over. I was literally just like right down inside the kitchen, which is right there on next to the front porch. I heard it, so What's I go out. That's probably about five or so. So it's just a couple hours after. Yes, this was literally just a few hours afterwards. Um, yes, sir. And he went up the hill and turned around, so I got out my camera and started filming. Of course, I have security cameras as well. And I filmed him coming back down the hill, and he laid on the horn even harder coming back down because he saw me standing out there. As soon as he was able to see me, he started laying on the horn. And uh, it looked like he even flipped me off. I don't know if I got that on film or not, but as he was driving by, his window was down, his arm was out, and he, he, we looked eye to eye. Had you ever... I never met the man before seen in my him, life. Never seen him before. Not until that, that day. day. No, sir. Okay. What kind of vehicle he got? It it was like a black, smaller, mid-size SUV. I don't want to know. I don't want to say what make or model it was. I got pictures of it if you want to see it. No, I'm sure it's not going to be hard for me to figure out which one it is. And that right there should give us a little bit of foreshadowing on how seriously this complaint will be taken. As we've witnessed hundreds of times on this channel, the department will likely investigate themselves and find no wrongdoing, or reprimand the officer administratively, and refuse to disclose to the public the nature of the disciplinary actions taken. As you'll see, the lieutenant has already determined that it probably isn't an offense worthy of termination, even though this is the very beginning of the investigation itself. The man looked me up illegally somehow because he's a jailer and he doesn't have the right to run tags or to get my information off of a FOIA request, however he did it. And to come to my home off the clock and to make threats to me and my family, well, it's not going to happen. Say anything about the threats. Well, well, how would you take that, sir? Well, I mean, the man looking me up and seeking me out. I was asking, did well, you, just just what he did. Just, no, just what he, he did in itself is a threat. Okay. And you know, it's a fact. It is. It's intimidation. Right, I want to give. I want to give him the chance. You know what I mean? I want to give him the chance to say, "Hey, I was having a bad day. If that's what it was, or whatever else." Because hey. I mean, I'm a man, you're a man, I mean, I get it. You know, people have bad days, or now, you know, if it wasn't just him having a bad day, and that's who he is, and you know, that's a whole different story. Well, like the chief said, that's very out of character. Well, that's, you know, and, and I'll take, you know, I, and I will take, I will believe it, you know, I'll take the benefit of the doubt until I'm proven wrong, you know, so, hey. But, like I said, I, I mean, I don't want a man to lose his job or nothing over it. It's not about that, but he, uh, well, I mean, come on now. I mean, that's borderline stalking. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm saying I don't think it would come to a termination defense. Well, yeah, it might so, not. With but, the gentleman that I mean, it, it, we've never had problems It with. could, but I'm just saying, you know, to we're just being hypothetical. So like I said, so, I don't want it to even come close to that. I mean, I don't think a man should lose a job. As if all of this wasn't enough, on Sunday, the 27th of March, Officer Knipe filed two privacy complaints against Big G Audit's videos in an attempt to have them removed from YouTube. Ultimately, Sheriff Jeff Cassidy will have to determine what he thinks is best for his department, facility, employees, constituents, and re-election, as early voting happens to begin in two weeks. I edited quite a bit out of Big G's original videos, but his full versions can be viewed on his channel. At the time of this recording, 
Big G's videos have not been removed. They will be linked below if you'd like to visit and say hello and listen for future updates. Just be sure to let him know that I sent you. As always, thanks for watching. If you have a video you'd like to submit for review, use the link in the description or pinned comment. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification for future content. And remember to like, share, and comment down below of what you think of this interaction. It really helps the channel. If you enjoy our content, try our other channels, Lackluster Limited for criminal psychology content, and The Odd Side for paranormal videos. Shirts and other merchandise are available at the Teespring store. Memberships start at just a buck if you'd like to help further support the channel and get a slick Lack logo next to your name. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All links are down below.